Welcome to the Microjig Shop. My name is Morgan, and today I'm going to build something for my dog. This is Samson. He's a good boy. But when he eats, he ends up pushing his metal bowl around my tile floor, and it's loud. Like, wake the dead loud. Anyway, I'm going to build him this two bowl food and water buffet with a little food storage compartment. This is a pretty simple build, but the glue up can be a little tricky. It uses miter joints, but it only has three sides. I designed it that way on purpose to demonstrate how just four match fit dovetail clamps upgraded with X pads can easily tackle this glue up. For this project, you'll need the following. Step one, cut the stock to size. Cut a single three quarter inch thick hardwood board to finish it nine inches wide by 28 and a quarter in length. Next, cut five inches off from both ends of the 28 and a quarter inch long board. Don't cut them both from the same side. We want the grain to be continuous from the side along the top and down the other side. Give us that cool waterfall effect. Step two, cut miter joints. Tilt your table saw blade to 45 degrees. Using a miter gauge or a table saw sled, cross cut one end of each five inch long board and both sides of the 18 inch long board. After miters are cut, lay the three parts flat with the mitered edges facing down in the order they'll be assembled. Put a strip of painter's tape across the parts where they meet then carefully flip the parts over. Apply wood glue to all four mitered edges and join the three parts. Align the X pad's edge positioning guide with the outermost corner of the joints with the screw center guide off the edge of the material. Then tighten the clamps. Use a machinist square to ensure that the sides are 90 degrees with the top. If necessary, lightly tap the sides with a mallet to square them up with the top. Allow an appropriate time for the glue to dry. Refer to your glue manufacturer's instructions. While the glue is drying, Cut half inch wide plywood down to two inches wide by 48 inches long. From the 48 inch long strip, cut two 14 and a half inch long parts and two eight and a quarter inch long parts. Glue and clamp the four parts together with the short parts overlapping the long parts as shown. The assembly should finish at eight and a quarter by 15 and a half. Cut a piece of quarter inch thick plywood to finish at eight and three eighths by 15 and five eighths. This will be the bottom of the drawer. Apply glue to the bottom edge of the four-sided drawer assembly, then flip it over and place it on top of the drawer bottom. The drawer bottom is an eighth of an inch oversized, which will give you a sixteenth of an inch reveal around all four sides. Ensure that the bottom overhangs all four sides, then clamp it in place. You may want to use calls to ensure even pressure. Again, allow the glue to dry before unclamping. Cut the bowl holes. Mark the center of the long side of the top and draw a line straight across. Next, draw diagonal lines from each corner of the center line, where the diagonal lines intersect is at the center of that half of the top. To prevent the bowls from interfering with the walls of the food drawer, move the center point of both holes a half inch toward the center line. Based on the diameter of the bowls you're using, cut the holes out of the top using a router with a circle cutting jig or a template with a flush drum bit. Because the edge of the hole will be covered by the lip of the bowl, this can also be done carefully with a jigsaw depending on your level of command and comfortability with the tool. Make drawer bottom disappear. Using a 45 degree chamfer bit, chamfer the excess off of the drawer bottom. The chamfer should begin at the joint between the walls of the drawer and the bottom. Install a food drawer. Install the drawer slides according to the manufacturer's instructions. The drawer front will be inset, so the slides should be installed so that the drawer sits toward the back. Once the drawer is installed and properly positioned, attach the drawer front with an eighth inch reveal on all four sides. Step eight, finishing. At this point, you can either route edge profiles to your liking, chamfer, round over, whatever, or simply sand it. We recommend applying at least two coats of clear finish to protect the piece. And that's it. Not so bad. Be sure to visit us online for free plans, more instructional videos, and to sign up for our newsletter. And as always, we want to see what you're up to. So tag us on social media, show us what you're working on. Thanks for watching.